Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Octave 11. Jojo here. And today, welcome back, Marg. We have Marg Murphy, astrologer extraordinaire, back again, our favourite. And today, we're going to have a little bit of a chat about uh, the new moon and the uh, total solar eclipse that's happening today. Welcome back, Marg. Nice to see your face. Thanks, Jo. You too. Thank you. Yeah, I've got the chart in front of me and I've got it set for Dalesford for the, ex for the eclipse time. So for people who like to tune into the exact moment, the eclipse is at um, about 6.30 in Dalesford this evening and it's at 12 degrees of Sagittarius. So both the sun and the moon are, at, are in Sag and that's a new moon. And, and this time, because we are the sun and moon are so close to the to the south node at one degree of sag that it's a total solar eclipse not visible for us here so interestingly um well just in a new moon uh if we're into following the moon cycles and moon magic new moon's the time where we set intentions for the next month but because it's an eclipse we can really set intentions for the next six months because we're six months away from the next eclipse. And this is a powerful one, not just because it's um, a, a total solar eclipse, but because it's the last eclipse in the Gemini Sag axis uh, for about nine years. Wow. So, and then we've, we're moving, we've been as having, you, as you said, into the Taurus. Um, Sag, was it? Yeah, mm. Taurus Scorpio. Scorpio. So sorry. we did have a Taurus Scorpio lunar eclipse a couple of weeks ago. Now we've got the very last of the Sag Gemini. And so, you know, Sag is about what do we believe in? What are our belief systems? How truthful are we? And because it's a collective social sign, then I think they're questions for the community at large. What is it that we're 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 tuning into and what is it that we believe what is our philosophy how do we tune into the broader collective and how do we link in with different groups so there's a little theme around around wisdom and information and the difference i suppose between information and chatter and truth and wisdom wow, very, so they're the kinds of things that i might very pertinent for today's times. Always. always. It's always pertinent, as above, so below. Um, for Dalesford and, the, you know, the, this area, it's taking place in the seventh house, so we all need to have a good look at our relationships. And that's just not, that's not our only our one-on-one -on -one intimate relationship if we have one, but it's relationships generally. So how are we travelling through this time where, you know, there's chaos reigning in the upper echelons of society, corporate structures and government structures? How are we travelling within our own groups and our families and our friendship groups. And, and we, maybe we need to look in and just check in on what beliefs and systems and what philosophical systems and what ethical views we share or don't share and checking in with self to think about how important that is. Is this particular issue um, something that I would compromise on and can you know in order to keep this friendship or relationship going or have i reached a point where i won't compromise about this particular issue whatever your personal issue is and you get a bit of an idea of what that might be by finding sagittarius in your own chart finding where sag lies in your chart gives you an idea of whereabouts in your life story um the eclipse is asking you to focus some attention. I notice that in this eclipse too, we've got Venus, which is also relationships. That's why I gave that little relationship spin to it. Venus um, is relationships and values, and she's conjunct Pluto today, well, you know, moving closer in the next few days, but it's considered a conjunction, three degrees apart. So there's really deep changes going on. So, you know, it's always 
whatever's going on out there um, in the big wide world is always echoing something that we can we can tune into on a very personal level. What are my values? What are my relationships? Who are they with? Why? Why am I continuing to dance with this person? Um, perhaps it's time to let go. Or perhaps it's time to commit to a deeper and stronger and more truthful relationship. They're some of the themes that I see jumping out. I see Black Moon Lilith exactly opposite Mercury. And so that's a lot about the dialogues that we're having with each other. Well, you could consider at this time, point in time too our relationship with the government, you know, our relationship with the, the powers that be too and, yeah, what level. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And that's without being um, political because too political because the chart is addressing everyone regardless of whether they're, you know, wearing masks, not vaccinated, not on the marches or not on the marches, the charts for everyone. So it's for all of us to be really looking in at that, whatever our views might be at the moment, maybe they need some revision and some renewal. Mm. And with Mercury opposite Lilith, we have to be sure that we have to be mindful that we don't get caught up in, in, um, argument mercury communication and lilith and she can be very you know dog not dogmatic but she very she really knows what the truth is and so if she's recognizing that this is not the truth then she will exile herself we've got a really big story she's opposite the eclipse as well because mercury's caught up in that um sag stellium so we've really got a big story going on in, in society at large, referring to what you're talking about, ab around exile and, and how do we as a, as a group, as a community, hold everyone, how can we be inclusive when we have divisions that are being imposed upon us by government? Good question. And that's a question, and I don't have an answer. Um, <laughs> good to ponder, and though. And so good to ponder. So just trying to um, navigate this very tricky terrain that we're all going through, that we're all travelling through together, whichever side of the story we're on. Yeah. Aquarius is right at the midheaven of this chart, um, and, and Jupiter's sitting up there. And Jupiter's in Aquarius. So Jupiter's really urging people to be a lot more inclusive, um, to recognise that, that we are all equal, that when this Jupiter gives us the vision for the new. And so we all, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, chatter out there around on YouTube and astrological sites about moving into the Aquarian age. Well, Jupiter is leading that story and and jupiter is a benevolent um energy and so we have to be able to find a place within ourselves where we can feel optimistic and hopeful for the future because if we can't then there is no point is there mm -hmm. so i think that's a significant thing mm -hmm. for us to all dwell on mm -hmm. What do you think, Jojo? Absolutely. Expansive and abundant. And, you know, to me that always comes back to uh, gratitude, gratitude for what you do have. And then from there it can always expand. But if you don't have the gratitude initially, it's hard to find that space to even expand. Yeah. With it. Yeah. yeah. And we have to be mindful too that Mars is squaring that Jupiter. And so that's our challenge, isn't it? Mars, action, passion, even anger. But in Scorpio, where it's very strong, quite likes being in Scorpio, and that's about really digging deep and, and searching for that real place of truth and integrity within ourselves and not necessarily getting into clashes with people that might have different beliefs because we have to hold all of them. Well, it's good. As, it's a, also as, an, 
conjunct the North Node too, isn't it? So it's where we're headed. So you don't want to cut people out or off or... Um, no, no, no. It's actually very close to the South Node. Oh, sorry. It is the, the South, south this Node is, the Horseshoe. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, 28, one degrees still, Sag, yep. Yes, yes, that's yep. the south node. So this is a generally this is an eclipse of letting go, letting go and surrendering to what we recognize we don't need within ourselves and within our groups anymore. And so I you know I, and you said the the idea of gratitude. I think if we do ritual and if we follow the moon, then we're always looking to find that space of gratitude within us gratitude and surrender that's what i feel well that's how i try to approach the moons and so in order to be able to set my own personal intentions for the next month and very potently for the next month but then in a, in a more subtle way over the next six months i have to feel gratitude for what is for what i have already and and set my intentions with that acknowledgement. So it's a big one for everyone tonight. So if you're into it at all, just stop for a moment at half past six, depending on how long you want to stop for. You might stop from, you know, six till seven. Find a beautiful place, not too cold and windy, might be by the fire, and take a moment of pause and feel into how you are really feeling and how that feeling can spread out from you and include people in a sense of gratitude and hope and optimism. There's a couple of wonderful um, creating. meditations online that you can access too, like global meditations for the eclipse time to, to tune in and yeah, share that and be a part of that and spread it further and wider. Because we know we Maybe need it. Maybe you can add a link or something when you post this. Sure. This is powerful because we're moving into the solstice. So this eclipse is leading us into the solstice, isn't it? Which might be another full moon. Be very close. Hmm. I'm just moving my computer forward and finding the next full moon. Yeah, which is on the 19th of December to a couple of days before the, the solstice. So it's a, a kind of a, a powerful month this December. Feels like it. We're also, <laughs> we're also bracing ourselves for the, uh, the next exact Saturn and Uranus square, which actually comes after that full moon. So we'll talk about then that later on, yeah. But setting intention... And holding everyone in your heart. Hmm. Yeah. Nice That's one, about nice. all I've got to say. I, I want to go and be quiet now for the rest of this day. Feels like it, doesn't it? Close to the fire again. Yeah. And we tune in maybe when we're having our waxing quarter in a week or so, Jo. Oh, I love a quickie yeah. with you, Mark. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> See you. <laughs> Have fun. Have a wonderful day. Bye. We'll speak soon. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. See ya.